Hey, welcome back to our Blender news. So we got new news from Blender. Today we have news to the layered textures design. And this is the design the Blender development published that they've created for the layered textures that they want to create. And they are asking for feedback and that's why they're telling us what they have thought about. And we can read this together and we can show what they wrote, what they will be working on in the future of Blender. We are currently on blender.org. I will have the link of the blog post in the description. So you can click that. It is on blender.org and then you have to scroll down and then here the layer textures design. And then we can read it. We have the February 20. Second in 2022. So let's read li the little blog post. The layered textures design. Texturing is one of the most strategic. Stra this word gets me every time. Strategic targets for 2022. I've made a video on those that are the most targets Blender is focusing in 2022 to be developing on. There is more to come, but those are the planned ones. I've made a video on those. The first part of the project involves upgrading 3D texture painting performance, quality and tools and is planned to be worked on in the coming months. The second part of the project is a new procedural and layered system to create textures aimed at PBR shading. That part of the project will start later this year and we are sharing the initial design now for feedback from the community. So if you have, if you have thought, thoughts about this you don't like the, the design from it or you want to have something different, you can give feedback or if you think that is a good design, then you can also give feedback. The texture data block. The design revolves around a redesigned texture data block. This data block contains texture nodes and a list of channels it outputs. A typical set of channels for PBR shading are base colors, roughness, metallic and normal map normal maps. The system is not limited to that and arbitrary outputs are possible for different types of BSDFs or use in other contexts like brushes and geometry nodes. The texture layers. The texture properties for a texture data block show a texture layer stack. Procedural textures layers can be dropped in from the asset browser. And the new image or attribute layers can be created to be hand to be hand painted. We have a little image here. Layers work similar to typical 2D image editing applications. Blend modes, mask, reordering, hiding, merging, and modifiers would be supported. Selecting an image texture or color attribute would enable painting on it in the 3D viewport. This is this is amazing. A difference is that each layer consists of all the channels defined for the texture or a subset. Blending masks and modifiers simultaneously affect all channels in a layer. The texture nodes. The texture layer stack corresponds to a node graph and the node editor provides an alternative view to the edit to edit the same texture. This can be used to create more complex node setups that can be expressed in a stack. That could be like this. So we have also nodes for that. That's amazing. The new texture nodes are mostly shared with the shader nodes. New additions are layering nodes and nodes for effects that are not practical at render time. The set of available nodes would be Common nodes like math, mix, image texture and noise texture. Shader nodes like geometry, texture coordinate and attribute nodes. Texture, texture specific nodes like blur and filter. Oh gosh, we need blur in shader nodes. There's a little hack for it, but didn't have one at the moment. Layer node to bundle multiple channels together into a layer. Layer stack node to combine layers. Texture node to link in an existing texture data block asset. There is a new layer socket type that combines multiple channels. 
Nodes like Mix and Blur work on multiple socket types, including layer sockets where they perform the same operation on all channels. Baking. While textures can be fully procedural, baking is an important part of this design for multiple reasons. First, exporting PBR textures to a game engine. There would be a workflow to quickly bake all relevant texture channels down to an image texture easily. This is great for game developers, I think. Second, for textures with many layers, baking is important for efficient rendering in Cycles and Eevee. That's also great. Third, some nodes like Blur, Filter and others require baking to work at all, as they cannot be implemented efficient, efficiently or at all in renders. This may be the case why we have no Blur node in Shader nodes, I'm not sure. Baking procedural texture layers into an image texture or color attribute to continue hand painting. That's also great. So baking is a little bit a downer currently in Eevee and in Cycles. So great that that's get that this is getting improved. And there should be an easy way to bake all textures in a scene for users as well as exporters and renders that need them. Moving on to the materials. Using texture channels in a material is done by adding a texture channels node that outputs all the channels of a texture and linking those channels to the corresponding principal BSDF inputs. Most of the time such node setups are automatically set up as part of the default material. That would then be look like that. The texture channels node has the following settings. The node inputs created in texture nodes with a group input node, similar to geometry nodes. This makes textures customizable with parameters, attribute names or image textures. Option to evaluate the texture channels procedural or baked. Baking settings like image resolution, file path, margin, etc. These are not a property of the texture data block itself but rather to the material using it. This way multiple materials can be used to bake the same texture on different meshes. Then we have assets. Texture data blocks are available in the asset browser for easy dropping into the texture layer stack. Wow, this is amazing. So we have also an integration into the asset browser. This is great. Blender would ship with a library of procedural textures that can be used for quickly creating materials. So we have also pre-made materials like my own material library that I have on Gumroad. You can check it out if you want. <laughs> One complexity of the design is the texture data blocks are aimed to multiple use cases, including different types of materials, sculpt or texture brushes, geometry nodes or compositing. For this, we need some methods to we need some method to filtering textures for the current task in the context of the in the context of a pbr workflow materials and textures are almost the same thing in such cases having both a list of material and texture assets seems redundant however in blender we need to accommodate more workflows and so we likely can't hide this distinction from users the feedback. So this is, if you want to have feedback, you can, this is for you. If you have more ideas or things, or you have ideas to improve this design, then now listen. This is an ambitious design that affects many areas of Blender. That's true. We welcome feedback and ideas to improve it. There is a topic for design discussion on DevTalk. So you have the link in my description, you can go there and then you can click here and then you are on DevTalk. That's a website where you can give feedback very shortly and then you can scroll down here and here you can reply and then you can write a comment here and leave your feedback there. And there are also a few questions the Blender team 
it was thinking about. For example, is making a single texture data block for many uses a good idea or does it make the workflow too fuzzy? Is there a better alternative? If not, how would filtering relevant texture assets work exactly? Are there better ways to integrate textures into materials than through a node? Is it worth having a type of material that uses a texture data block directly and has no nodes at all? And potentially, and potentially even embeds the texture nodes so there are no separate data blocks. With this system, the users can now do the same thing both in texture and shader nodes. How does a user decide to pick one or the other? Is there anything that can be done to guide it this? To guide this? What is a good baking workflow in a scene with potentially many objects with many texture layers? In a dedicated texturing application, there is a clear export step. But how can we make a good workflow in Blender where users must know to bake textures before moving on to the next object? Some textures can remain procedural while others must be baked to work at all. How can we communicate this well to the users? Is it a matter of having a procedural or baked switch on textures that can be manual controlled or is there more to it? How do we define what a modifier is in the layer stack? Conceptually, this can be any texture node that has a layer input and output. But how do we find a set of such node and node groups that work well in a higher level UI? Possibly some asset metadata on node groups? And the last questions. Can we improve on the name of the texture data block or the new plant nodes? These were questions the Blender team was facing. And if you have any ideas on those questions or you have your own recommendations, go to DevTalk here on the link and then you can give it a go. And this are this this is a nice design, I think. And you can leave your feedback there. And the link is in my description. There are exciting times ahead. So thank you for watching. Leave feedback by the Blender team and see you later.